welcome to my channel it's Donnell today I'm going to do some white tip powder using OG dip powder this is 001 and it's glow in the dark uh, so first I'm going to use a lint free wipe with just a little bit of alcohol and wipe off my nails just to make sure there's no oils or anything on them And I'm going to use OG's Peel Base. I haven't had much success with Peel Base working properly. So hopefully this time it will. So I'm not filing off my top coat because Peel Base usually needs a smooth surface. And this is air dry, it does not need to be cured. So there's many ways to use peel base. Everybody is a little bit different. So I'm testing this out to see if this works for me. So I'm using a fairly thin coat and I am applying full coverage. So some people have a problem with the peel base popping off within hours or even a day. And so they'll do like just one strip of peel base down the center of their nail or they'll do it all over except avoiding the edges. But to start off, I am going to do it this way. So the pill base, one thing is that you have to make sure it's really dry. So I'm going to give this a good long 10 minutes to ensure it's fully dry. And I'll be back whenever that's done. Okay, I let that dry for a full 10 minutes and I even put it under a little desktop fan for a few minutes to make sure it was super dry. So I haven't dipped in a while so I'm excited to do this. I'm using OG dip powder base coat activator and top coat. Hope I remember what I'm doing. So I'll start a little ways away from the cuticle, push it back, making sure not to touch the cuticle. Oh, you couldn't even see. I don't usually do the pour over method because I find I get patchy results, but that jar is very small. So you can see where I didn't get a lot of dip powder and not much cleanup is needed. Like I said, I haven't done dips in a long time, so I kind of forget how fast they dry. <laughs> that looks good. I 
just pour some back in so I can I really like these extra large cupcake liners the silicone ones and this is they're thick um, I prefer those to any other method I've tried may have flooded the cuticle a little bit on this. And I got these on Amazon, super pointed. And this is a different style of cuticle pusher on the end. It came in a two pack, really affordable on Amazon. My dip liquids are kind of old. So I'm a little bit concerned about how this is going to go. It'll probably look fine. The problem is going to be is if the activator is contaminated or too old, it will probably crack. Looking good so far. When you're dipping your nails, when you're applying the base, you want to kind of make sure you Try to keep your finger pointing down because it will run right back into that cuticle. I think I've been a overly cautious, so I've done a really good job with not getting anything on my cuticles. using a fluffy dust brush and lightly dusting off the excess powder. I'm giving that pinky just a little extra to soak in. All right, so they're all dust brushed off. You can see the thumb was a little too thin with my dip base, so it's um very streaky looking. did too much that time. Mm -hmm. Nice. 
so I have three main places that I buy dip from now. I've tried a bunch of them, but the three that I pretty much stick to is CN Designer Dips, this one, OG Dip Powder, and Bling Galleria. I absolutely love all three. I think they all have something a little bit different to offer. So that's pretty much the only places I shop these days for dip and honestly I haven't bought dip in a long time. Oh, where's my finger stand? I have quite the dip collection and when I started getting into gels and oops more oops nail art yeah I um I can buff that out that's not a big issue um I kind of, for some reason, quit dipping. I do get dip flu. It's like a severe, like, sinus allergy. I just felt myself touch my... I'm going to dip in because I forgot to pour. I don't want it to dry. Sorry about that angle, that was weird. Um, so you get, you know, anything from, you know, watery eyes, runny nose, to severe congestion, coughing. I mean, you, do, you can, some people get it severe and can feel actually sick. It's severe enough to where they can't even use the certain liquids. They have, um, they do have low odor liquids by some brands. Um, I have never tried them because I don't think it's bad enough for me anyway. Um, some people go as far to not only wear a mask, but to wear like a full on respirator when they're dipping. You can also dip using the gel method if you're if the dip flu is too bad and you're not allergic to gels, you can do the gel method, which is just what it sounds like. Instead of using the dip liquids, you would do base gel, sprinkle on your powder, cure, rinse and repeat. And when you're doing dip liquid, I mean, if you're doing gel liquids, you don't have to, um, use activator because you're curing it. Kind of missing those edges doing pour over.
This is also my first time recording a tip manny, so um, it's a little bit different than doing tips or just painting, so I apologize for the weird shots and angles. All right, those little indentations and stuff, I'm going to be able just to go ahead and buff out, but they look good so far. And they're already glowing. If I stick my hands under my desk, they're glowing. So I'm going to dust off the excess. And I think I'm going to leave it like that. I think I'm only going to do the two layers because I don't want my nails to get too, too thick. Because I'm still considering... Oh, what I'm going to do on top of it. So I don't want to have ridiculously thick nails. So I'm just kind of brushing off any excess so it doesn't get anywhere else. And again, I'm going to go in with my dust brush and then I'm going to put a, a little bit of a stiffer brush and gently not too rough I'm just gonna kind of make sure any that way it doesn't look spotty when I'm done and I got a little bit of dip glue on my skin the dip base and so the easiest way to get it off is just to gently file it and then that way it's not sticky all right so I'm gonna get my activator and hopefully my activator is still good. So I'm just gonna go in and put a generous coat on each one. I'm going to let the activator do its thing and harden. I'm going to give it about five minutes and when that's done, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. The activator has hardened. So, so far, so good. Now I need to file and buff. buffer and a file so I'm gonna tidy up the edges first with the file Try to get rid of any unevenness. I did miss a couple spots. Um, but again, I haven't dipped in a long time and it's my first time filming dipping. So I'm kind of seeing things a little bit differently. All right. I'm not the best at shaping. <laughs> so I do my best. I think the end result 
I got some on my skin, so I'm filing that off. I think the end result most of the time is decent. Mm. And I'm okay. As long as they're close, that's good for me. This one looks really wonky though, right there. I'm trying to figure out how to hold my hand. Sorry if I'm out of frame a lot. I'm just trying to figure this out. The pinky's a little bit wonky, but I'll get to it in a second. All right, so you can also use an e-file for this, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to gently go around my cuticle area just to kind of smooth anything out. I don't want to have a big ledge back there. I didn't do a layer of clear dip over this, so if I file too much, I'm going to start filing off the color, which it looks like I've already thinned out over there, so that's okay. trying to be a little bit more gentle that thumb didn't have as much coverage that first layer so I'm not surprised. It's like from pouring over it, it's like on all my nails, there's like a ledge. It's like it didn't get all the way down in there.
they feel they feel hard I can't but I am still concerned that that activator is too old some of the dust so I can kind of see where I'm at. Not terrible. I'm going to try to switch to the buffer to see if I can get um, try to move the camera a little bit closer to me because I it's hard for me I'm holding my hands pretty far away from my body to try to be in focus so anyway I'm switching to the buffer to hopefully not buff off too much of the color So besides that area, I think that looks pretty good. When you're filing and buffing, you want to make sure you're hot. These corners are a little rough. So, when you're filing and buffing, you want to make sure you're not doing it too much on one side or one area. You want to keep moving. So that you don't get it imbalanced. Oh, I can't seem to buff out that little ding I made earlier. Oops. I thought it would just buff right out, but it must have been too deep. Dipping is definitely a um, trust the process kind of thing, especially when you're first starting. It can look very funky, but then it cleans up pretty quickly. And so my nail DIY nail journey really started um, about two and a half years ago. I was drawn in by <laughs> nail boo ads and I never did my nails. It was rare um, for me to even polish them because my nails are just naturally very thin and very brittle and they break easy. And 
so I just rarely did them. And sometimes a, just a protective clear coat, but that would be it. I didn't, I, I've never really had my nails done professionally more than a couple of times, like at a salon. Um, just, and I'm not saying this to take away from anybody, but for me, like, there's other things I want to spend money on. <laughs> there was other things I wanted to spend money on. So, to me, I was not going to spend a couple hours at a salon paying a lot of money. And, um... just couldn't get that little spot out either um so that's how my thinking was you know years ago like a long time ago I just didn't want to spend the money and the time to get my nails done I was like I had better things to do and I'm not very um I'm not a I'm not a glamorous girl uh you know not into beauty stuff really but you know I'm getting older and decided I wanted to do something to you know make myself feel better and look nice and so I got sucked into nail boo and placed an order and it's been downhill from there. <laughs> um, I absolutely fell in love with it. The community online, um, there's lots of them, but um, I have my favorites. And then finding other, other shops and stuff as well. Um, and other products and then that led into stamping and then that led into uh, gels and builder gels and foils and stickers and uh, everything so yeah I would suggest picking one and <laughs> Not picking one and sticking with it, but kind of, you know, and I don't even want to say perfecting, but kind of getting, mastering one thing before you move on to something else. And before you buy all the things, you know, we tend to get, jump in. I'm a compulsive type person, so I go all in. There's no... There's no dip in the toe in the water. This pinky now is giving me fits. I cannot get the shape right. Um, may have to stay a little bit wonky. Um, yeah, I'm not a dip a toe in kind of girl. I'm a just dive in, go for it. So, um, I really should get certified as a nail technician. I should go to school. Because uh, I have a salon in my living room. And I would have, I actually would go to school if I could, but um, with my husband's schedule and our older dog and the care she needs, I can't really justify doing that at this time. All right, but maybe one day. So I'm just using this stiff nail brush to get all the dust off and to check it out. So there we go. I mean, there's a few, there's a few spots, the thumb area, that little nick I did right here. This one's pretty good. This one is a 
a little weird right there. And the shape is weird. This side's straight and this side's curved. And then my pinky, I don't know what the heck is going on with that sucker, but. All right, so I think they look okay. So I am going to, once again, brush off any of that dust. free wipe out so I'm gonna take a lint free wipe and some alcohol Oops. and just clean those nails really good get off any dust and also the residual activator so this is what they look like. All right, so this time, oh, not base, I need this. The paper towel. All right, so the way OG system works is after you filed and buffed, after the first layer of activator, now I'm gonna go in with this, with a generous amount for the second layer. And then soon as I'm done, I will start with my um, minimal top coat swipes and then go back with the full coverage top coat. You'll see. All right, so very generous amount of activator. So now we're going to go in with super thin layer of top coat and we're going to do minimal swipes. One, two, and we're going to wipe off before we put back in our bottle. And then I'm just going to flip this napkin over so that I'm not wiping it. And so now I'm going to immediately go in and apply good coverage of top coat on each nail. Cap the edges. Wipe off before I put it back in.
flooded there. The reason you wipe off the brush of the top coat is because you don't want any of the residual activator getting into your top coat bottle or it will harden it like a rock pretty quickly. I'm going to dispose of this and that's it. I think I did pretty good for my first time dipping in a long time and on camera for the first time. Looks good. I've never done this shape myself before. So you can see this hand is different. <laughs> um, and I don't plan on making a match. I, I rarely have both hands the same. So yeah. I ended up putting on some water slide decals after I did the dip and I didn't get pictures of the glow in the dark without them. So I went ahead and added that here. Maybe I'll do a quick video of how I use water slide decals soon. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. Please hit the like button, comment below, share and subscribe. Until next time, bye.